Cliff, where were you last year? I was in the Philippines. I, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here now. And would you be good enough to read the nominations for the Short Subjects Award? Right. In live action, the nominees are Blake, Doug Jackson, producer, The Magic Machines, Joan Keller Stern, producer, People Soup, Mark Merson, producer, and here is the envelope. Will you announce the winner? Happily. The winner is The Magic Machines, Joan Keller Stern. When I decided to submit Magic Machines to the Academy, I was warned by my friends who were very kind that it, it touched on some things that were controversial and that it was really something from another generation. But the fact that uh, it's touched you and that you've chosen to honor it in this way, way means that there can't be such a big gap between us after all. I thank you. this magic show. Some people live in the magic show. Some people are the magic show. Some people wonder what magic is, and still others know. My name is Robert Gilbert. I'm 25 years old, and I'm a sculptor. I build machines that are, are like life. They're kinetic. They move. I use a lot of found objects and old parts from older machines. I scrap together the leftovers of our society, put them together in an artistic way. Walt Pickle's a friend who lives in the desert. He's been out there for 32 years. He's really a beautiful man. He's an entity all of his own. I've never known anyone on Earth it's quite like him or even closely related to his type. He's accumulated around him just an incredible amount of mechanical scrap that he's picked up all over the desert over the years. And all of a sudden, out in the middle of nowhere, there's an entire junkyard. And I go out there and get parts and scraps and to be with Walt Bickle and spend a weekend in the desert. He's got the very best collection of junk that I've ever seen. It's better than any junkyard. He's got old tractors and old cars and hundreds of eccentrics and bearing parts and old gears and spend hours wandering through looking at all the parts and the, the different things. Every time I go out there, I'm always finding new things I never found before. It's another world here on Earth. It's good that it exists. I'm a child. I just never grew up. Now I'm planning on growing up. I've seen where the grown-ups are at. don't want to be there. Sometimes when I'm goofing on the street, people say, you know, well, who are you? And I, I tell them I'm Robert America, last of the Mishpuk Indians. Oh, yeah, I've worked a incredible number of jobs. I get involved in different jobs, and I like to absorb what's there, and I usually change jobs. I've worked in everything. I've worked in real estate, worked downtown, been involved in a computer company, sold, manufactured things, been in a poster company, worked in a landscape firm, built homes, worked as a longshoreman for a year, two different times, loaded and unloaded trucks, drove dump trucks, swept floors, worked in restaurants, been a lifeguard, taught water skiing, I loved it. it. Work's a great thing. I believe in work and pleasure, about a balance of both. I think conscious work is the only really self-satisfying thing there is on Earth, beyond sex, of course. I don't have a lot of tools. I the drill press in my welder. I do a lot of cutting with my torch. It's a lot of heavy work. It's a lot of welding. I guess welding's a big part of it. I really love welding. I love to watch the metals run together. It's really an interesting experience. It's been feel the metals and see them and they flow together and there's a tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat. 
there's a lot going on with the in the development of the machines. It's a, I go into like a whole other world, like a trance. I'm just everything else is divided out in my conscious, and there's all this there is is the entity itself in my adding to it. I, sometimes I don't even know how I build them. I look at them later, and I don't even know who made them. They're kind of there, and they happened. I think in dealing with my machines in the sculpture sense, there are balance between composition, form, and negative space and positive space as well as kinetic and as well as mechanical. There's many sides to them and I deal with them in all different relationships. Like I see it as a moving thing and then I see it as a mechanical thing and as a technical thing and I also see it in terms of composition. I'm constantly, you know, weighing things back and forth like if there's a piece that I want to create a, a particular design for, I might give a little way as to it being kinetic just because of its form and versa visa. That's vice versa, vice versa. I paint up most of my pieces. I like primary colors. I like things that are alive. And it also redefines particular parts. Well, in the Groper, I had it all black when I finished it. I primed it, and, and then I started to pick out parts of it. All my machines have particular parts that work and do different things. And then through painting, I'm able to redefine these things in a sense of being individual, so that, that my, my pieces are a composition of many different things. machines, certain parts take on a definite form. For instance, in the Groper, where I have the, the uh, motor, and it's encased in a particular type of like a, a shield or a covering, which is the top of an old stove. And when I was working on one particular part of this machine, I looked at the motor from a certain angle, and it looked like a bulldog inside of a, a doghouse. And from that point on, I always referred to the motor inside this one particular machine as being this bulldog. And it really does look like a bulldog. So it's taking on a form beyond the form in which it's intended, even though it is functional. It is a social commentary. It's dealing with the quests of them, if we look at societies of them and us society. I mean, e flat and the flower trees a fantasy. It was more or less of a spontaneous piece. It started to take on form, and then it justified its existence by you know evolving to a total entity. It's a fun thing. It's a play machine. It's a toy. There's always a problem transporting the machines. We move them on trucks. We pick them up and move them with cranes and hoists and forklifts and move them on dollies and it's part of the game with them. It's yeah. always fun to drive around with them on the freeways. They can create quite a stir, get a lot of reactions from people. It's kind of fun. They're not used to seeing things like that being driven around. Good art should really affect you. It makes you stop and wonder and re-relate yourself to it. and it's a passage from Alice in Wonderland and she refers to this knight that comes through on a horse in the forest as the only one who was real. But he kept falling off his horse and I've always seen that as kind of a part of the two-sided humor that's there. And the knight is that knight, the little black knight. I made this radio. It's very natural and organic shape. It's bright yellow and it's being compared to the computers which are very hard edged and precise and formatted. The 
stash is another toy. It's a unique toy. It's a hiding place. It's a little world unto itself. The, the, the stash is a whole world. It's got a top and a bottom and, and a mechanism and a hiding place and a fantasy and a, and a toy. It's its own little world. It's its own place. I love the stash. I think my favorite piece up to now is the airplane, the Jefferson airplane. It's been built over the last two years, and it's kind of evolved with my evolution. I like fantasy. It's realer than most of the reality. They are a happy thing. They are a, a joyful laughter machinery. But some of them represent the other side of machinery as well, like the rape of the flower, you know, which is dealing with something that a machine is doing in reality, like the machine really is raping the flowers, symbolizing the younger, or the movement, or nature. I think the flower is an appropriate symbol. I think I was what they labeled as a flower child for quite a while, still am, I guess. We're all still here, all of us. We're just getting older and a little coarser, I guess. The music machine was a completely pre-thought concept of creating as many different sounds as I could off of one power source was basically the challenge that I created for myself and, and try to utilize as many different types of, of movements as possible as different types of sounds. The title or the label music machine is a little misleading. It's not really music. It is sounds though. It's its own mechanical music in a sense. June 23rd was that. Uh, I built that after Century City took place on June 23rd. That was the first major action by the police in force against the peace movement that was evolving at that time. I was really angry after that. I made the June 23rd in anger. My art's for them, of us. It's a way we have of touching them. It's an aesthetic bomb. It's a means of letting the management know that we have faces, that people are real, that there's spontaneity going on, that it doesn't matter what the kind of scene they're running down. You know, They just can't cover up all the holes in the sieve. We just keep running through. They're all the people that are unconcerned. They're the people that are inhumane. It's the guy who makes the screw that fits into the part, that fits into the plane, that drops the bomb. They're trying to do right by doing wrong. They're imposing their reality upon everyone. It's the person that's, that's defined himself to a point where he's rigid and not flexible. It's the person who's got the disease of groping for power. I mean, I consider myself a freak in our society, a victim of it. Everybody knows what's going on, just most people aren't concerned with it. That's really too bad. The young are like mirrors in this country. We're reflecting people, their images. They're, they're having to look at themselves. You know what happened in the United States? If you can look at the whole thing that the United States is like a movie, we all were in the movie, and all of a sudden they let us have an intermission. That was about four years ago. And we went out and we didn't want to come back in to see the second half. This is a good place. Earth is a good place. And it could be a lot better, and it will be, because we're going to win.
There is this magic show. Some people live in the magic show. Some people are the magic show. Some people wonder what magic is. And still others know.